musical moments. Today we're going to speak about music of Frédéric Chopin, realizing that his big birthday is coming up very soon in the year 2010. Today our guest is Vivian Chen, a scholar in piano, uh, in music of Chopin, written a doctorate about the Chopin's music, an excellent pianist who was performing throughout the whole world, and a wonderful, exciting, and caring piano teacher. I really want to ask Vivian, how did you become a pianist? When I was little, I went to my uncle's piano store a lot. My uncle is a piano maker, and he makes wonderful pianos. And I remember I just went to his store, and uh, I'll play around with my cousins, and they will play some tunes on the piano. And I didn't have, I didn't have piano lessons back then, but I can just copy what they just played immediately. So my uncle found out I have a little talent, so he suggested my mom to take me to a serious piano teacher. So I started learning piano when I was six years old. And 10 months la later, I passed the audition to enter a music gift gifted program in Taiwan. And that's when I started my music life. And throughout my music training in Taiwan, it's all music program. And after that, I came to the States to study master's degree from New England Conservatory and then my doctorate degree from Rutgers University. And here I am teaching piano in Boston area. I would love to ask Vivian, how different is the music system of education for the gifted children in, ta in Taiwan? Yes, um, I think it's a very good program. <laughs> I was doing it. It's from elementary school to high school. And um, you have to audition for each stage and you have to pass instrumental playing and ear training, you have to pass music theory and sight reading to get into the program. And they just gather all the music talented children together in a class and they go to all different kind of music courses together. For example, everything, music theory, history, and orchestra and choir um, courses like that. And of course, we have to learn what typical children will learn. Chinese, English, math, etc. So life for us is very, very busy. And after all the classes we took, after school, we have to practice three instruments and do a lot of homework, a lot of studies, a lot of exams. But I didn't mind it because I have all these, my friends, they... Surrounded with yes. children who do the same. Yes. So I didn't mind it. And of course, there's some bonus for these because each year we are tour around the world. So music enabled me to see the world very well. We went to USA, of course, and we went to Australia. We went to Japan, Europe. We toured Europe for three weeks and that was a very good experience for me. And we competed in different countries as well. So we represent our country, Taiwan, to compete throughout the world so that the world know Taiwan as a country. So that was a very, very good experience for me. It, it sounds very similar to how it intensely talented children studying in uh, Russia. In Russia, too. Yeah, I think yeah, it's similar. Vivian, with so much exposure to the different kinds of music, different cultures, you picked the music of Chopin as your favorite. How and why did that happen? I love Chopin. His music is very personal. It touches my heart in a very poetic way. I've heard you playing music from Andante's Pianata. Would you please play uh, an excerpt of it? Because it's such a wonderful uh, example of uh, what you're saying about Chopin. Yes, sure, of course. <laughs> Thank you. 
please uh, tell us about your history with Chopin's music. My first affection of Chopin's music uh, started when I was nine. My teacher, Virginia Shaw from Julia School of Music, she introduced me his Polonaise hero. And um, I practiced, and I found out there's a lot of big chords for my small hands back then. And I didn't mind it, I just kept practicing because I love the sound of the music, the melody, and the beautiful chords, and all the strong Polonaise rhythms. And I just keep practicing, but you know, there's a lot of repeating octaves on the left hand, and it makes my whole arm very sore. And but after a month later, my hands just got stretched, and I all of a sudden I just didn't have any problems with all the big chords. So that was my turning point of my music making history, <laughs> and. After that, I can play a lot of Chopin's works, like his etudes, his nocturnes, his ballades, and his waltz. So that's my story of Chopin. It's a beautiful story. And by the way, you reminded me of a fact that Chopin himself uh, did not have a big hand, but rather small. So it could be a consolation for lots of people, lots of young uh, musicians who would love to play Chopin, but they think they cannot afford it because of the size of their hand. Uh, but knowing the fact that uh, it could be stretched and it could be flexed, uh, and uh, you become a better pianist uh, by challenging yourself, um, that's a very, very good um, fact to know. Yes, of course. So just be patient and practice. Your hand will get stretched and um, you can play a lot of wonderful music. Of course, I will repeat the well-known fact that Chopin uh, mostly written for piano and nevertheless, it's the whole world of music. But um, which features of Chopin excite you the most? I love his pursuit of perfection. He always change. He's always changing his music, even after publication. So he he will compose a new piece, and then he'll send directly send out to three different countries: England, Germany, and France. And they don't have a copy machine back then. <laughs> they have to have the copyist. So sometimes the copyists they make mistakes and send it back to Chopin and then he will make another change. And sometimes the publishers didn't do the good job and Chopin he will just go back and say, oh, this is not good, so you have to change it. So that's why there's a lot of different editions of Chopin's work. And even after the pub pub publication, Chopin he annotated a lot of different styles and even for different styles for different students as well. So that's why I love Chopin's work. It's very, very personal and it's very free. Wow, that answers my question. So many times I've seen uh, the same walls mm -hmm. or the same nocturnal published twice uh, with changes in the rhythm or uh, in ornamentation. Yes. And now I know why. Because yes. I was really, really wondering. Yeah. Uh, you probably have a good example to demonstrate that feature, do you? Yes, um, there's a very good example of the nocturne in C sharp minor, and in the middle part of, of this song, Chopin, he just used totally different um, time signature for the right hand, and the rhythm just sound a little bit more vague than his first edition. So I'm going to play it and you can see what's the difference. Now this is the first version. The rhythm on the right hand is very clear.
position, the right hand is in 3-4 and left hand is in 4-4. So it's more complicated and more polyphonic. Distinctive style, I think, is tempo rubato. Tempo rubato in Italian means stolen time. That means um, when you play a piece of music, you do the slightly speeding up or slowing down by your choice. I think it's very important to achieve the true spirit of Chopin's tempo rubato because if you do it too much, it's too over and it's not very tasteful. But if you do it too little, it's not enough. It's like something is missing. So it takes a long time of practicing and experiments to achieve the true spirit of the tempo rubato of Chopin's music. I've heard lots of pianists attempted to describe that um, style rubato. Uh, and I remember Maurizio Paulini had a uh, a really good, good description of it, how it has to be so sincere and it has to be, uh, how it has to be so free and almost impossible to copy, almost impossible yes. to learn how to do it. Comes with an experience without listening a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mature, it's a mature um, feature of a pianist. I yeah, it, it cannot be taught. It has to come from yourself and the love of the music and not overdoing it. I, I still yes. think there are some guidelines. It's not completely free. For example, yes. that whole idea of compensation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, just like um, the word rubato means like uh, steal it and put back. Yes. So it's like taking it slower and then compensating yes. by going faster. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yet the rate of slowing down and speeding up, it's very personal it, uh, and it depends on the tempo itself. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, like you mentioned, uh, the taste of the musician. Yes. Uh, uh, not to overdo. And, uh, delicate thing. Yes. Like music itself. Almost any piece of Chopin's music can demonstrate this feature, but it's up to you. Uh, pick something to show us uh, the real spirit of Chopin's rubato. Um, I'll pick Chopin's Ballade, number one. Great. Everybody's favorite. <laughs> Thank you. 
important um, features of Chopin's music, thinking chromatically, uh, like his music is based on the chromatical scale. If you would try to demonstrate, that would be sure. nice for our listeners. Yes, uh, that, this emotional chromatical kind of thinking was a feature of Chopin's music from the way he started, even when he was a child. Uh, and uh, that chromatical thinking, very emotional, very sharp, was inherited um, by, by a uh, lot of composers well, after uh, Chopin, especially Scriabin. If you are talking about passing a baton, I think he inherited uh, Chopin's tempo rubato a, a lot and Chopin's chromatic uh, thinking that I just played. And um, his music is very passionate as well. And he, although he's in a totally different era of Chopin, more contemporary and more modern chords, more dissonant, but his music is very much like Chopin. He was an admirer of Chopin and yes. made him uh, the role model of mm -hmm. his earliest um, composers, composing life. Uh, Today, one of the students of the Music Academy, Christopher Chen, will play an excerpt from poem Opus 32. Uh, I think it's the greatest example of um, two composers being so close together, although very original as themselves, uh, in the, the piece of Scriabin's music, as poetic, and as tender and as emotional like Chopin's music. Please enjoy. <laughs> format of the show. We just caught a little glimpse of you playing Chopin. Uh, and now I think everybody is intrigued and wants to hear more of your playing of Chopin and maybe other music. Please tell us, where can we go to listen more of your performance? Yes, I give concerts regularly um, in solo recitals and chamber recitals. And next year is going to be Chopin's 200 year birthday. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to do a serious concert, all Chopin's works. So um, you, you guys can check the Sharon Music Academy website to follow my concerts information. Thank you so much. It was a privilege and pleasure having you on the show. Thank you, Tanya. It was my pleasure too. Thank you.